if your GT score is stuck just like mine was, then this is the perfect video for you. Hi, I'm Dr. Debarati. I'm a general surgery resident in Arjipar Medical College, Kolkata. For those of you here for the first time, welcome to my channel. So this has been a much requested video after you guys saw the short on my GT improvement. Uh, seeing that my score went up from uh, 488 to 544 in just three weeks. So yeah, keeping that in mind, here I am to spill all my secrets about that uh, massive improvement. So yeah, without wasting any more time, let's get right into the video. Now to begin with, first let me give you a little background on the issue that I was facing. My score was consistently stuck at 450 or below for like 3-4 months during my preparation. By the time I had already done two entire revisions of my narrow main notes, like um, somehow I just could not pinpoint the issue that was going wrong. I watched multiple videos on YouTube, uh, both from faculty and uh, from my seniors who had cracked the exam. They were helpful, but none of them, you know, gave me the exact trick that I needed to break my plate. And I'm sure you guys will just relate to this. I understand it's just very, very frustrating to see people scoring 700 above in like every GT when you are stuck at 450 since so many months and you are doing all you can you're giving it your best every day I know I have been there so yeah this was the exact problem that I was facing and if you are facing a problem like mine well here's the solution so what did I do the first thing that I uh, you know did or rather accidentally that happened to me was DTR. So one day I was, you know, on YouTube searching for a solution to this problem when randomly uh, I came across one of Zana Man's revision videos. In that particular video, she was explaining about the nerve columns and like, you know, that is one of the hardest things to remember, like in the entire syllabus, like at least uh, to me it was. So, and she was, you know, explaining that very difficult to remember thing in such an easy to remember way. I instantly became a fan. This is not sponsored in any way. This is just what happened to me. And I'm so glad it happened because it changed my entire preparation. And by extension, it changed my life. So what I did was I instantly ordered the DPR workbook and started annotating it uh, at this stage of the preparation when you are in the revision phase you know writing stuff down actually helps a lot like for someone like me who didn't make their own notes and you know studied from the prepared notes uh, so this was a much needed thing for me because writing down helps you to remember stuff so much better and I started annotating the BTR workbook in a way so that it could serve as my 20th notebook also, the notebook that I could read one week or just days before the exam. And it would have everything in it in a short and concise way and especially the points that I forget. So yes, that's what I did with BTR. I watched Mam's videos, annotated it and also added the points from Marrow that I uh, thought were missing in the notes. Also, uh, like, you know, added the PYQ points uh, in the post-it notes and stuff uh, like oh, wherever it was missing. So, yeah, that's how I used VTR, basically, to remember things most of all. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much you have studied. If you can't remember what you have studied, it does you know it just doesn't matter so yeah you have to remember and Zana ma'am helped me remember all those so yeah ma'am if you're watching this video thank you now the second thing is definitely going to be the point on reviewing GTs I changed the way I reviewed my GTs there I have made an entire video on how to improve your GT scores and I'll be linking it down in the description below so please give it a watch like I've explained it in very details over there I'll be just 
telling the main points about it in this uh, video. So what I did, I started dividing the wrongs into four categories. Recall errors, silly mistakes, stuff I didn't know and stuff that, you know, I got wrong by changing my answers and not trusting my instincts. And let me tell you, the fourth one blew my mind. Like when I tallied my uh, wrongs, most of them used to go into this category, you know, of changing my answers and hence getting the question wrong. So yeah, that's how I started reviewing my GTs. And it will be different for each one of you. Some of you might have more recall errors. Some of you, you know, have more silly mistakes like you read the question wrong. And that is just inexcusable. Those mistakes should hurt you at this point, you know. So, yeah, definitely, definitely uh, watch my video on GTs and, you know, come up with a way by which you can analyze how you are getting most of your questions wrong. And that's how you improve in GTs. There's no other way. I really wish I could tell you there was, but there isn't. Trust me. The third and the most important thing that I started doing was solving 100 MCQs daily. Those were mixed bag MCQs, meaning they would have MCQs from all the 19 subjects. Uh, most of the time I used to put the filters as image based MCQs, neat, and I said, and obviously the clinical uh, based questions. Like these four filters are a must, but some of the times you can also like, you know, get into the habit of putting in no filters and just taking the questions as they come. Because uh, like me 2024, the questions were, you know, very unique and people had not seen a paper like that. From what I have heard, me 2025 was much more easier than me 2024, meaning the questions were more answerable or people were, you know, more sure about the answers, but me 24 was not like that. If we go by the pattern of them making, uh, you know, like one year an easier paper, next year a harder paper, then you can expect a harder paper like next year. And in any case, how can it even hurt you? You should always be prepared for the worst and that's just what I'm saying. So yes, 100 MCQs daily, even on the days when you are just, you know, bored and not wanting to study, you can just solve the MCQs and it would make such a difference at the end. Like, trust me on this and just get started with this practice because in the end, it's just an MCQ exam that you are appearing for. Your knowledge does not have that much value as does your skill at solving MCQs. So that's the skill you have to master and it won't come easy. Like they say, practice makes perfect. So that was it for this video. I know you're frustrated, but just don't give up. Nothing that is worth having in life comes easy. So this neat PG rank that you are wanting so bad, it won't come easy either. I really wish I could tell you there was an easier way to do this, but trust me, there isn't. You have to keep on getting those answers wrong. You have to keep on making those mistakes and, you know, forgetting things till a day comes that you don't forget that anymore or you don't make that mistake anymore. And this is exactly how you'll crack the exam. A lot of people fail not because they started wrong or because they did not want it enough. But because they gave up midway, that's exactly what you don't have to do. Never ever give up and trust me, one day will come, you know, all this hard work that you are putting in, it will make sense. Just always picture that day in mind, and just carry on. So that's it for this video. I'll be seeing you in my next one. For my next video, I'm thinking about making a video on tackling mental health during preparation because I feel that's a hugely under, uh, you know, rated and under addressed topic when it makes the most difference in your preparation. So yes, let me know if you guys would want me to make a video on that. And if you guys found this video helpful and informative, you know what to do. <laughs> like share and subscribe to my channel so yeah thank you
thank you uh bye for now <laughs>